A young man wakes up in his home, and is excited already for the night that is about to change his life forever. A beautiful woman wakes up in almost a similar house and is also eager for the night, as something special is going to take place. Both of them prepare for their day, and the man texts the woman to be at their planned destination on time. The woman has some trouble starting up her car, but it starts soon enough to help her reach her office. While he is driving to work, the man FaceTime his mother who is thrilled that his son is getting engaged that night. She offers her help in picking up the engagement ring, but the man says that he would pick it up himself. The woman also FaceTime her mother who is worried that the man would break up with her instead of proposing to her, but the woman is optimistic that she would be getting engaged. Her mother tells her to not be late for her sister's wedding tomorrow. The man arrives at his office and distributes coffee to his colleagues in a happy mood. His colleague advises him to take everything easy and tells him that he's a lucky man, as he is having a hard time finding the right girl for himself. The woman has a chat with her colleague in her office. Her colleague is surprised that the woman's boyfriend is about to propose to her, as it has only been three months since they met each other. Her colleague is also surprised that nobody has ever met the woman's boyfriend, including the woman's own family. The woman goes to the bridal dress store with her sister, Carrie, and her mother to pick the right dress for herself for her sister's upcoming wedding. She reveals her boyfriend's name, Kip, and informs that Kip would also be attending her sister's wedding. Carrie is having a hard time believing her as her sister has had a history of fake boyfriends. She assures Carrie that Kip is real and would be attending the wedding. Carrie wants her sister to actually bring someone as the expense of food catering is extremely high, or otherwise, she would invite Brian's Auntie V. Carrie's mother reminds her that she is paying for everything, not her. Carrie has a habit of paying attention to detail for every little thing, and wants her wedding to be completely perfect. When her sister discusses the idea of getting a tan, Carrie goes into a frenzy saying that, if her sister gets a tan then it could possibly lead to a disaster that could jeopardize her wedding. Carrie argues that her sister has to make everything about her and a strong quarrel breaks out, but their mother comes in the way to end it quickly. The man goes to pick up the engagement ring and he couldn't be more excited for the night. His mother appears and shows excitement for the engagement as well, although she criticizes the selection of the ring box and asks it to be changed. She asks if her son has prepared the engagement speech. When he gives a green light signal to his mother's question, she asks him to run over his engagement speech in front of her. Initially hesitant, the man begins to give his speech. During his speech, he reveals his girlfriend's name, Clementine. His mother is more than impressed and confirms that his son is good to go. The night arrives and both man and the woman head to a local bar named Bennigan's. As New Year is close, the man discloses that it's his family tradition of having New Year's brunch at Bennigan's. The man says that he would be out of the city for some time the next day, and would be back for the woman in time. In reality, both the man and woman are dating two completely different persons. The man is dating an influencer. Before the woman could tell that she has picked her boyfriend's tux, she learns that Kip is about to break up with her. The woman is saddened to hear this, as she thought that Kip invited her to get engaged with her. The name of the woman is Margaret, who begins to overreact to Kip breaking up with her. The name of the man is Griffin who happens to be a successful lawyer, and is shocked to hear that Clementine wants him to join her uncle's firm. Margaret splashes her drink in Kip's face. Both Griffin and Clementine are watching them from nearby. Griffin takes out the engagement ring to propose to Clementine. And before he could proceed with his lovely speech, Clementine intervenes and says yes. She tells Griffin to save his speech for their New Year's party tomorrow. Griffin is upset as he believes Clementine has to make everything about herself and her social media followers. Clementine believes that she has a responsibility of influencing other people's life. Clementine walks away and informs Griffin to be at her party on time. While she goes out, she hands a standing Margaret some cash and takes her cab. Griffin bumps into Margaret and learns that she too had some sort of argument regarding a marriage proposal. The next morning, Margaret tends to avoid work and meeting anyone. Her mother calls and feels that she might have broken up with Kip. She reminds her to be at her sister's wedding on time and pick up her veil from the store as well. Griffin wakes up and finds Clementine in her house. She apologizes to him for ruining something that meant a lot to him. Griffin says that he still cares about what Clementine wants, and he is ready for his proposal at Clementine's party. Clementine still doesn't understand why Griffin has to go to meet his friends. She is pushy when it comes to making certain changes in Griffin's life. She also finds her toothbrush wet. She says that some things aren't meant to be shared by a couple which further shows her assertive behavior. Griffin meets his friends at a bathhouse, and his friends can't fully contemplate Griffin's engagement proposal. All of his friends raise a toast for Griffin, which results in him getting super drunk. They book a taxi and send him home. Margaret is at the salon with her colleague, and she still can't get over the fact that Kip broke up with her. Her colleague is angry with Kip's actions and also worries for Margaret, as she doesn't have anyone to show up with at the wedding. Her colleague decides that they should just pick up a local man for the wedding and pretend that the man is Kip. Griffin returns home and is still hungover. He goes to bed and after still not feeling well, he decides to take a shower before going back to bed again. 
Margaret returns home and finds her home a bit messed up. She finds her bathroom wet and is even more confused. She decides to go to bed and finds Griffin. Margaret starts to yell for help, as Griffin is a total stranger to her and tries calling the police. Griffin, in his defense, says that she is actually in his home, but Margaret is confident that they are in her house. While she almost calls the police, Margaret finds Griffin to be completely harmless and hangs up the phone. Griffin believes that he has seen Margaret somewhere, and he remembers that he actually came across her in Bennigan's. Margaret wonders if he is stalking her, but they soon find out that both of them share the same house address. Someone rings the doorbell, and Margaret goes to check on who it is and it's none other than Kip. He begins to apologize for his actions but Margaret wants him to leave. He enters her house once again, this time to get his tux from her. Much to his disbelief, Kip runs into Griffin. Kip can't believe that Margaret has already started to see another guy after their breakup, but Margaret assures him that it's nothing like that. Kip is frustrated that Margaret has invited a total stranger into her house who could potentially harm her. Adding more insult to injury, Margaret makes out with Griffin in front of Kip to make him jealous. A furious Kip leaves after threatening Griffin. Margaret appeals to Griffin to accompany her to her sister's wedding, after telling him about the entire situation. Griffin notices the poster of the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's, and tells her that it's his favorite movie. Just like their home address, both of them share a love for movies, and Breakfast at Tiffany's is both of their favorite movie ever. Griffin agrees to go to Carrie's wedding and Margaret couldn't be happier. She tells Griffin to pretend that he's Kip and he works as a contractor. She gives Kip's tux to Griffin and also lets him use her personal toothbrush, something Clementine would never do. Griffin advises that he should be the one to drive, as Margaret is still under the influence of alcohol. Griffin tells her about his girlfriend and how he is going to propose to her later that night. Margaret thought that they broke up at Bennigan's, but Griffin says that it was nothing like that and it was just a small argument. Margaret almost forgets about the veil of her sister and tells Griffin to pull up at the store. They reach the store only to find it closed. Margaret says that if she isn't able to get the veil, the entire wedding would become a disaster, as Carrie wants everything to be perfect. She finds an open window and Griffin suggests that she shouldn't break in, as it would be considered a burglary. Knowing there is no other better option, Griffin suggests that he should be the one to break in and get the veil. He does, and both run away as the burglar alarm goes off. They try to start their car but the car breaks down for good this time. Margaret laments that the entire wedding is going to be ruined. But Griffin believes that if two lovers are destined to be together then nothing can be ruined. Margaret finds a horse carriage passing by and she runs in order to get on it. There's an old couple seated in the carriage and Margaret requests them to give them a ride to the venue. The couple happily agree to her request. To pass time, Griffin asks the couple where they are heading. The couple responds that they are celebrating their 58th anniversary. The old man says that he found the love of his life wearing a carnation pink coat in Manhattan. He continues his story and says that life brought her near to him at a movie theater, and when the movie ended, he asked her out. She said no to him and his request of getting her phone number, as she thought that he was a complete stranger. Fate brought them close to each other at a restaurant and both of them decided to elope later on, and they have been together ever since. The couple arrives at the restaurant where they are about to celebrate, and the old woman hands her beautiful pink coat to Margaret, saying that when the universe hands anyone a gift, they should not say no. The old woman secretly says to Margaret that Griffin seems like a great guy. Griffin asks them about the movie they watched when they met each other, to which they reply breakfast at Tiffany's, which is also their favorite. Wanting to return their favor, Griffin secretly hands out his credit card to one of the employees of the restaurant to pay for the couple's meal. Both of them finally arrive at their destination after being two hours late. Margaret guides Griffin about her family members. Carrie's is upset as Margaret almost ruined her wedding. Margaret assures her that she has brought Kip, who is actually in the form of Griffin. Margaret apologizes for being late but Carrie is glad that Margaret came to her wedding. Meanwhile, Griffin seems to be getting along with Margaret's family and even Carrie's husband-to-be, Brian. Margaret's colleague arrives and thinking that Griffin is Kip, she slaps Griffin for breaking up with Margaret. Before things could escalate, Margaret steps in and says that Kip actually apologized to her and everything is fine now. The wedding is about to begin, and as things couldn't get any worse, lights go out when Carrie is being taken down the aisle by her beloved father. The manager of the hotel arrives and says that power lines are freezing up and lights won't be back anytime soon. There is no backup as well. As everyone is aware that Kip is a contractor, Griffin panics as everyone looks to him for help. The idea of lighting candles is put down as the manager says that they would be violating the fire codes. Griffin uses his intellectual brain to come up with the idea of using oranges as candles. He tells Margaret that he once defended a chef who was guilty to a fault, and the chef taught him how to make candles out of oranges. The oranges are enough to fill the room with good lighting, and just when Carrie and her husband share a kiss, the lights come back. Griffin has become everyone's favorite as he practically saved the wedding. Margaret thanks Griffin once again for helping her throughout the night, and Griffin believes that it's time for him to leave and before he could, he goes to get champagne to raise a toast to the newlywed couple. 
Margaret's colleague inquires about the imposter kip. Margaret explains that Griffin ended up in her bedroom, thinking that he was in his house as she shared the same house address. One of Griffin's old associates arrives, and she questions Griffin's actions of pretending to be someone else, when he is just about to be engaged with an influencer. Griffin tells her straight that he is helping out a friend and not to tell this anyone. Margaret asks Carrie about the woman Griffin is talking to. Carrie says that she's Brian's Andy V, the person who would have come if Kip hadn't shown up. Margaret is upset as Carrie gave away Kip's reserved seat to someone else. Margaret steps up and requests Griffin to stay for dinner, to which he easily agrees. Clementine calls Griffin and asks him where he is. Griffin lies to her that he had to make a quick stop to help out a friend. Clementine FaceTime him and is confused to find Griffin at a wedding. She is further puzzled when she hears everyone call Griffin Kip. Griffin promises to explain her everything. The time of wedding photos arrive and Griffin is forced to be in the pictures, as he was the savior of the wedding in the first place. He awkwardly enters the group photos. Carrie's husband reminisces about how he actually met Carrie and fell in love with her. Carrie professes her love for him as well, and also thanks Margaret and Griffin for saving the wedding. Everyone tries to elicit information from Griffin regarding how Margaret and Griffin met. Griffin reruns the story of the old couple and incorporates himself and Margaret in it. Everyone seems to be in awe of that story. Just when things were getting normal, the real Kip breaks into the wedding, while Griffin and Margaret were dancing. Margaret politely asks Kip to leave before things could get more worse than it already is between them. Kip notices that Griffin is actually wearing his tuxedo. A small fight breaks out between Kip and Griffin, as Kip is angry at Griffin for wearing his tux. Kip easily overpowers a fragile Griffin. Everyone finds out that Margaret was lying about Griffin, and Carrie's faith is restored in Margaret's ability to ruin everything. Margaret goes away and Griffin follows her. Griffin apologizes for everything and Margaret stops him, and says that she is the one who should be apologizing, as she brought Griffin into this mess. Kip arrives and Griffin rebukes him for ruining the entire moment. Griffin leaves and takes off the tux and gives it back to Kip. Having nothing to say else, Kip apologizes to Margaret for breaking up with her and messing up the wedding. Griffin is on his way to Clementine's party on a bus, and he is handed a tracksuit to put on by another passenger. Margaret's colleague puts forth a point that it was fate that Griffin offered to help Margaret, otherwise no one is that nice in this world. Clementine is upset at Griffin for arriving late but she dismisses the argument, as Griffin is about to propose to her in a few moments. As Carrie is about to throw her bouquet, Kip pauses her and asks to say something to Margaret. Kip bends on his knee to finally propose to Margaret, and Griffin does the same to Clementine. Margaret and Griffin have changed their mind about their current relationship, and laments about how they only wanted to marry their partners. Both Margaret and Griffin end their relationship with the ones they used to call lovers. Margaret says that she felt more connection with the stranger in 24 hours than in the three months she spent with Kip. She bids farewell to Kip for good this time. Margaret tells Carrie that she always wanted to be like her, and Carrie advises her to be herself. Both of them hug it out to resolve the conflicts between them. Margaret heads to Griffin's house and surprises him with a Griffin tattoo on her back. Both of them share a romantic moment, only for Clementine to arrive. Clementine still can't get over her breakup with Griffin. She asks for her stuff as she paid for them. Clementine remembers that she bumped into Margaret at Bennigan's and wonders if she stole Griffin from her. Margaret assures her that it's nothing like that and she met Griffin accidentally. Clementine breaks down crying and says that she no longer has Griffin and was embarrassed by everyone at the party and on the internet. Margaret realizes that she has forcefully entered Griffin's life and destroyed his relationship with Clementine. Margaret decides to leave but Griffin once again tries to pursue her. Margaret says that she doesn't want to mess with Griffin's life more. Griffin, on the other hand, believes that how the same house address they share, the tattoo on Margaret's back, and their love for movies are an indication of them being together and it is nothing more than fate. Margaret still leaves. The next morning at Bennigan's, Griffin meets up with his parents and tells them about his breakup. His parents are supportive of his decision and want him to be relaxed with his personal life. Griffin hears some familiar voices and finds the carnation pink coat nearby. He reunites with Margaret once and for all and their relationship is solidified. 